evaluating quadratic functions using a graphing calculator. The intent of this video presentation is for you to follow along with your calculator in hand. You'll learn more that way. You may pause and rewind at will to make sure you understand how to do everything. This video lesson applies to TI-83 and TI-84 series calculators. Every quadratic function has two key points, a y-intercept and a vertex. Here's the y-intercept where the function crosses the y-axis and here's the vertex which in this case is the bottom or minimum point or value of the function. This is how these two points appear on an upward opening parabola or quadratic function. And here are the vertex or maximum again and the y-intercept of this quadratic function, this time for a downward opening parabola. And some quadratic functions have two other key points, x-intercepts, here shown along the x-axis. These x-intercepts can also be called roots, solutions, or zeros. The word solution comes into play if this quadratic function was created from a quadratic equation. Then these x-intercepts would represent solutions to that quadratic equation. We can evaluate the points on a graph to find out what they are. There is no scale given here, but I can tell you that each grid mark along both the x-axis and y-axis represents one unit. This y-intercept of the point 0, 0,8, we can just call a y-intercept of 8 and do so correctly. The coordinates of the vertex or maximum of this function are negative 1, 9. The coordinates of these x-intercepts are negative 4, 0 and 2, 0. And we can also say that the values of these x-intercepts are negative 4 and 2. So when you say the x-intercepts, you don't necessarily have to include the y or output value. But what if we have a quadratic function that isn't so nicely packaged, like this one, perhaps, where the vertex, the y-intercept, and x-intercepts are not pointed out to us exactly what they are. Here we'll go to the function editor view by pressing the y equals key at the upper left of the keypad. Let's look at the equation entered in the function editor. Entered in your calculator shown quantity x minus 3 times quantity x plus 2. Now press graph. We can look at where the function crosses the x-axis and the y-axis and get really close, but one of the main purposes of this video is to fully examine the powerful features in the calc menu to help us find the vertex and the x-intercepts. Let's look at the x-intercepts first. Go to the calc menu by pressing first, second, then trace, which is really uh, calc because the second moves the function of the calculator up to the blue letters above it, which are in this case C-A-L-C for calc. This is the calc menu. All seven items are powerful tools. Remember the early slide showing the x-intercepts? They are also called zeros. Go down to item two, zeros. Scroll down to two, zero, then press enter. This is what we get. Instead of scrolling down and entering, you could have just pressed the number two. Look at the left bound with question mark. Look at where the blinking cursor is near the y-axis. The calculator is asking you to move the cursor to the left of the zero you want to evaluate. Move the cursor to the left by pressing the left arrow on your keypad repeatedly. Arrow to the left until the cursor is above and to the left of the zero we want to evaluate. It doesn't have to be exactly in the location of the calculator shown here, but somewhere to the left. Press enter. Note that the left bound has been established and is identified by the little inward facing arrow near the top of the view screen. Now the calculator is asking for the right bound. Press the right arrow until the cursor is to the right of the x-intercept. See the cursor to the right of the x-intercept? Press enter. You now see the right bound arrow added to the view screen so the two arrows are inwardly facing each other. The calculator is prepared to give us the answer of the x-intercept or zero between these two arrows. Press enter. The calculator is now telling us that the x-intercept we're evaluating is 2. It is also telling us that the y-value for this x-intercept is 0, which shows that it is an x-intercept. Now that we found the value of the x-intercept on the left, let's go through the same process to find the x-intercept on the right side of the parabola. Start the process again by pressing second then trace as we did in the first time. Here we have the calc menu screen again. 
Go down to option 2, 0, as before, then press enter. The calculator is asking for a left bound again and showing the cursor uh, where we left it last time after our last calculation. Now arrow to the right until you are just to the left of the next x-intercept we want to evaluate. Stop when you are to the left of the zero we next want to evaluate. It doesn't have to be right next to it. Now again we have the, uh, after pressing enter, again we have the inward facing arrow above marking the left bound and the question asking for a right bound. Use the right arrow to move the cursor to the right of this intercept. Make sure the cursor is somewhere to the right of the x-intercept and uh, press enter. We have the right boundary arrow in place as well, telling us the calculator it is going to next find the zero or x-intercept located between the two inward arrows facing each other. Press enter. Now we have the second x-intercept at x equals 3. To find the y-intercept using the calc menu, we do what we did before. Press second, then trace. Here's the calc menu again. Uh, one or value is highlighted. Press enter. With this x equals below, the calculator is asking for an x input value. Choose the y intercept by entering zero for x. Press enter, and we get y equals negative six when x equals zero for the y intercept. With the x intercepts and the y intercept already found, all we need is the vertex. Look at the vertex. It looks like the function goes down just a little more to the right of the y-intercept of negative 6. Let's go back to the calc menu one last time by pressing second then trace. Here we see the calc menu again. To find the vertex we must choose either item 3 for the minimum or item 4 for the maximum. Since the parabola opens, down, opens upward, the vertex at the bottom has to be a minimum value. So go down to calc menu item 3, minimum press enter. The calculator's again asking that familiar question left bound. Notice that the cursor is just to the left of the vertex or minimum that we wish to evaluate. After pressing enter we see the arrow up again at the top of the view screen to the left of the point we wish to evaluate. Now, let's now arrow to the right of the vertex. It should just be a few strokes. Now we have the cursor to the right of the vertex and it's asking us for the right bound. Pressing enter, we get the right inward facing arrow as well. Uh, press enter again, we get as our minimum or vertex x value of 0.5 and our actual minimum is y equals negative 6.25. So we get as our minimum or vertex x equals 0.5 and y equals negative 6.25. Now we'll evaluate this function, y equals negative x squared plus 5x plus 6. We press the y equals key to get to the function editor. We enter our function in the function editor. This time we'll guarantee a standard window by first pressing zoom. Scroll down to option 6, zoom standard. Press enter. Here we see two x-intercepts and a y-intercept, but where is our vertex? Well, our vertex is above and outside our view screen. We're going to adjust the view screen window. Press the window key. Let's adjust the view screen by letting y max equal 15, and that changes it from its normal value of 10. Now we can see the vertex as well toward the top. Let's first work on the x-intercepts by pressing second, then trace for the calc menu. This is the calc menu again. Let's go down to option 2, 0. Press enter. The calculator is asking for the left bound. Let's arrow to the left of the, of the x-intercept on the left. Here we see the cursor to the left of the x-intercept. Pressing enter gives us the left boundary arrow at the top and asks the question, right bound? Let's arrow to the right of the x-intercept again. Now we see the cursor to the right of the x-intercept. Press enter. This sets the right boundary as well. Press enter again. This shows our x-intercept on the left as negative 1. Press second and trace to get to the calc menu. Here's the calc menu again. Go down to the menu choice 2, 0. Press enter. Go to the x-intercept on the right by pressing the right arrow key. Now go over to the right until you see the cursor just to the left of the x-intercept on the right press enter. Now you see the left bound arrow at the top 
and it is now asking us for the right bound. Arrow over to the right until you are to the right of the x-intercept. Make sure you have the cursor to the right of the x-intercept. Press enter. Now you see the right boundary arrow towards the top as well. These two arrows facing each other tell us that the calculator is ready to find the zero between the two arrows. Also the calculator asks, guess. Press enter. We can see that the x-intercept on the right is 6. Look at the y value on the right. It should be 0 since it's an x-intercept. Instead it gives us 1 times 10 to the minus 12 power. That would be 1 over 1 quadrillion. So effectively that's 0. When looking at roots and vertices, sometimes the calculator gives us numbers that are not perfectly rounded. Now we'll go to find the y-intercept. Press second trace to access the calc menu. Here's the calc menu. Where do we go to find the y-intercept? We press number one or enter to get value. We get our familiar x equals again at the lower left. It asks for an input value. Press zero to get the value of the y-intercept. Press enter. We see the value of the y-intercept is six. Now we'll find the vertex. Let's go to the calc menu again by pressing second then trace. Here we are at the calc menu. For this one, the parabola is opening downward, meaning that our vertex will be a maximum, so we go to 4, maximum. The calculator's asking for the left bound. Arrow to the right until we are just to the left of the vertex or maximum. And here's our cursor to the left of the vertex. Press enter. We have the left arrow now. It's hard to see right next to the cursor, but it's there, and the calculator is now asking for the right bound. Arrow over to the right of the vertex, a few strokes. Uh, until we get to that right of it. Here's the cursor to the right of the vertex. It need not be exactly where mine is here, but just somewhere to the right of the vertex that we're trying to evaluate. Press enter. Now we have the right arrow for the right boundary as well as the left one. We can see the left inward facing arrow better now. Uh, press enter. We get a maximum at 2.5 comma 12.25. Look at the three way to the right of the 2.5. That's three ten millions. Again, a very slight rounding error. The answer is really 2.5 comma 12.25. Here are the key points for this quadratic function that we found using the calc menu. We got x-intercepts of negative 1 and of 6 and a y-intercept of 6 and a vertex which is a maximum of 2.5 comma 12.25. Let's look at another function. f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2. When starting over I recommend setting the window back to standard by pressing zoom 6. Press zoom and here's the zoom menu. Go down to option 6 and press enter. You could also just press the number 6. Here's the standard window. Now press y equals to access the function editor and enter the function. Enter the function as shown. Press graph. Here it is. In the earlier quadratic functions we looked at, the x-intercepts, y-intercept, vertices were pretty visible. Here, the x-intercepts especially are congested and not too apparent. Uh, it's not too apparent exactly what they are. If we could change the view screen window to focus on this area that is, that is here boxed in the red rectangle, we should be able to see what is going on a lot better. Let's try to do that. We will use the feature zoom box. Press zoom. Here is the zoom menu. Note that one Z box for zoom box is highlighted. Choose one zoom box by pressing enter. Then your view screen should look like this. Arrow to the left. Move to the left until you see the little blinking cursor dot just to the left of the Y axis. This is the left side of the new viewing area we want to evaluate. Now arrow upward. Go up until you have the little blinking cursor at least as high as the y-intercept. Now press enter. You have a square cursor now and have established the upper left corner of your new viewing area. Now arrow downward. Keep arrowing down until you are below the vertex. See the line segment on the left between the boxes? That is the left boundary of your new viewing area. Now arrow over to the right until you are at least past the x-intercept at the right. This boxed in area circled in will fill your entire view screen when you press enter. Press enter. This is about what you should see. Note that both of the x-intercepts, the y-intercept and the vertex are now visible and clearly distinguishable at this scale. 
Let's find an x-intercept by going to the calc menu, second trace. Here's the calc menu again. Go down to option two, zero. Press enter. Here we have a blinking cursor. Arrow over to the left. Go over until the cursor is to the left of the x-intercept. Press enter. Now you have established the left bound. Arrow over to the right, to the right of the x-intercept. Here we have the cursor to the right of the x-intercept. Press enter. Now we see the right boundary arrow above as well. Press enter again. Now we have the zero of x equals one. Repeat the process of finding the other x-intercept. Stop the video and find it, then start again to see if you have the correct answer. You should get, uh, on evaluation of the second x-intercept, this value, x equals two. Let's go to find the y-intercept by pressing second, then trace to get the calc menu. Now at the calc menu, we can keep it where it is at one, Press enter. The calculator is asking for the value of x. Now enter zero. Press enter. Here we have the y-intercept of two, which we could have already known from the function itself. But this is analytically with the calculator how to do it. Let's find the, the uh, vertex by going to the calc menu by pressing second, then trace. Here's that calc menu again. Since the parabola opens upward, we need to go down to three to find the minimum for the vertex. The cursor is over here at the left. We need to move it uh, to the left of the vertex. We need to move to the right by pressing the right arrow. Now here's the cursor just to the left of the vertex. Press enter and the left bound arrow is set. Now arrow to the right of the vertex. Here the cursor is at the right of the vertex. Now it's up uh, set up to find the vertex or minimum between these two arrows. Press enter and you will see the vertex marked with the cursor blinking at the center and get the reading of the coordinates of the vertex as x equals 1.5 and y equals negative 0.25. Here are the vital statistics. The x-intercepts are 1 and 2. The y-intercept is 2 and the vertex is the point uh, 1.5 comma negative 0.25. Use what you've learned in this video so far to find the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex of the function y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. Turn off the video, find your answers, write them down, then restart the video to see if you got the right answers. Here are the vital statistics for the quadratic function y equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. The x-intercepts are negative 5 and 1, the y-intercept is negative 5, and the vertex is negative 2 comma negative 9. One last problem. Now find the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex of y equals negative x squared minus 5x plus 24. Hint, you may have to adjust your view screen window to see the vertex. You do that in the Windows mode, the window key. Stop the video, then restart it to check your answers. Here are the vital statistics for this last uh, parabola. The x-intercepts are negative 8 and 3. The y-intercept is 24, and the vertex is a maximum at negative 2.5 comma 30.25. Question. Why not use the table view on all these problems? The table view seems like it might be easier for a lot of these problems. Well, true, but the, but, uh, the table view sometimes will not work, mainly because the zeros of functions will sometimes not occur at integer value inputs. Uh, two, using the calc menu features using graphs and so forth is a lot of times easier to understand. And as a final reason, this lesson does feature the calc menu and the uh, table menu would kind of, could possibly subvert that. In this lesson, we use the calc menu to find x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the vertex of quadratic functions. This has been Evaluating Quadratic Functions Using a Graphing Calculator. Thanks for viewing.